Martin, uh, this is Peter, and uh, I'm using my big, fast, expensive uh, laptop that I've got now to be able to do these videos. Sometimes it's the easiest way to convey things uh, rather than even a screen share. But uh, where I am sitting in right now is uh, McGraw-Hill Connect, and that's the portal that you use as an instructor if you're using a McGraw-Hill text and having the students buy into a product line from McGraw-Hill called Connect. Okay, and that will be a learning management system. That's what they call these things now, LMS. Okay, so this is a McGraw Hill site, and I'm just showing you, I'm starting you from the beginning. I want to talk to you about this thing called Author, A U T H O R, that McGraw, I'm sorry, which Muzzy Lane puts out. Now, it's not listed, this author that I'm driving out that I talked to you about this morning, it's not listed by McGraw Hill directly. I'm not sure they're going to pick it up or not, or I'm not sure how Muzzy Lane is uh, actually pushing this thing out or not. Um, I actually think that there's an opportunity with Muzzy Lane itself to expand its business. So I think they should be hungry. Okay. So anyway, this is the portal I use. And actually, this is a record of all the courses that I've taught there. Uh, I think there's extra pages here. Okay. So these, I set up all my courses in here. If you looked at the dates, which you don't need to do, you'll see that what's listed in here is a, uh, an archive of all the courses I take. You can copy one semester over to the other if you wish, but I always just rewrite mine. Um, I think if I taught another year, I would definitely come up with standard uh, setup for each of these courses because it takes a lot of work. OK, so anyway, um, the the one product that we could talk about that we could push is this marketing and I have access to it. I've never taught with it before. But when you talk to McGraw Hill and you're interested in something, they just have you set up a course and that allows me to dive in and, and run the marketing simulation, which is getting pretty good reviews. I think it's probably Muzzy Lane's, one of Muzzy Lane's better uh, selling products there. But I run operations management. Okay, so the operations there. Uh, this is a course I've been teaching since the beginning, uh, the undergrad production systems class. And then uh, this will show you the uh, course. Yeah, for every course I set up, so this is the spring of 18, I have two different sections one of them is a traditional section i teach during the day and the other one is one that i teach in the evening okay so i set up a course for every term and then if i have multiple sections i create different instantiations you'd call of it or different entry points for these two different courses and my students what i do is i hand out an a url or a uh yeah url web address to my students and then they can plug into the correct section here okay so i'm going to go into my day it doesn't matter where i'm going right now but i'm going into the day section and what i can do is add assignments here and you can see the list of assignments i have so far for my uh day class here so i'll add some on later um, sometimes or usually i actually produce all the assignments ahead of time but i've gotten into the habit of just doing it as i'm flying along here okay and one of the things i wanted to show you is okay so i'm talking about using this simulation that i use so mcgraw hill has this other line of products practice and I use practice for operations. And so when the students buy access to the connect system for the course, they come in and they see these assignments and they go in and they do them. But they also have to click on this button over here because I also purchase, have them purchase McGraw-Hill practice. I click on practice. It takes them to a different interface that they're looking at. And I have to produce the simulations work in modules. OK. And so as an instructor, this is part of the screen that they don't see, but I get to assign and play the modules. OK. So for practice for operations, this product, they have six modules. OK. And so for the first three to four of these, there is a tutorial that occurs at the beginning of these that walk the student through and start familiarizing them with uh, how to play the game. And in this case, this mod one, mod two and mod three. Uh, are very tutorial, okay? It's hard not to, <laughs> to succeed in these because they hand walk you through and then give you a few choices of your own to, to run through and finish out the module. When you hit module four, uh, becomes the real challenge. Then you have module five and module six. It gets Basically, you're adding more on the plate. They have to be worrying more and more about the company as they go along. The tutorial mods, mod one through three, uh, basically introduce you to different parts of the company, okay? So I just want to give you an idea what it's like from a student, in fact, instructor standpoint of what's that about, okay? And so I'm going to dive in and let's say uh, I'm going to run mod six here. Uh, let me go back out of there. I, went, I clicked the wrong button. So I can, I can actually just get in there and play it. If I'm creating an assignment, I can come in here. I don't like to use the word play. I, I, I avoid using that word normally. Um, it, to me, I never mention it as a game. It's always simulation, all right? 
a lot of words around this in the market now are immersion. Uh, what is it? Uh, there's a few other words that they use, you know, total immersion experience, a couple industry terms. Okay. So when you come into this, to this module, so this is a standard product and I can't adjust anything in there. Uh, I hit click on play here and uh, I enter this module. This is the most advanced module. Okay. And so I think I've shown you this before, but I thought it was worth capturing on a video here. And you really have five locales of operation in this production plant and uh, this is the receiving you can you can read here it says receiving on the wall it says production floor shipping up here is bidding and contracts is up here in this office up here and then you have human resources and human resources is one of the most ambiguous parts of this game it's the hardest to get a control over because you can spend a lot of money on human resources and not get any effect on it. Okay. So, so basically uh, down here in the lower window, it shows contracts. Okay. And when we enter uh, mod six, they've stuffed us with a contract. We have to start out with a contract to make socks, 300 pairs of socks. Okay. So that, that's how it works. And we try to bid on contracts up here in the bidding area. And they, and then we have to schedule uh, the, the material. We have to schedule material to come in that's needed for the contract and wait for it pay for it also and then it's scheduled on the production floor and as it clears the production floor it gets over to shipping and then we have to remember to ship it all out okay now we have to hire people up here in the human resources and put them on the floor if you look around there's not any worker on these floors right now so the first step uh in this it's turn based okay so every turn is like a week okay and we can look down here at the lower left it says we're turn one of 50 and so it's almost an entire year if you played this all the way out to the end it's playing 50 rounds almost an entire year and you always start out at the beginning of the year at january and every month has exactly four weeks in it all right so that's just part of the game is uh it simplifies things if you just assume every month has four weeks okay so i just wanted to give you an idea what it's like for these students when they walk in and, and what it's like uh and so stepping into mod six they give you almost no instruction. You can see I just clicked into this. In the other modules, they take you through up to almost 45 steps. You have to keep clicking and following them, and they tell you about this. They tell you about that. They explain all these things to you, and uh, it takes pretty much 15 minutes just to get through the tutorial every time I run it. Okay, So I wanted you to see the product that we're talking about, and you can imagine scraping the skin off this software if it's built correctly. The engine underneath it, you could put another skin on top of it. It could be hospitality, right? So uh, it could be every, you know, think of all the different functional areas of, in hospitality of, let's call it a hotel, all right? And everywhere from ordering material to scheduling uh, help to training help. In, within this um, simulation, you can train your uh, employees and make them perform better. You have to figure out whether it's worth it or not. Okay, things like that. Uh, you know, and you, we just changed the metaphor here. The metaphor that we're using is that this is a production area, but you could just paint this over with five different areas of a hotel or create other areas. Okay, so usually when they build the software, they create what they call the presentation level. You know, this interpretation here of these rooms. It's a visual uh, locale. You know, it's a phys physical location. You know, um, and, and you could paint this all differently, but the effect of this is you're just sending messages from this top layer that we're in, where we set up commands and whatever, and you send it down to the engine underneath the presentation level. You send it down to the uh, machine that gives you that takes inputs and sends outputs back out to this level here. And that's what I'm talking about, scraping the skin off this. You could literally paint this in computer world with a whole hotel on this. All right. And we can make it more complicated, less complicated. You can have different levels. I mean, you could make it more complicated over time uh, and such. So, so that's what I'm interested in. OK, so that's what I wanted to cover. I just want to remind you of what it looks like to be in this thing. And now I've got to go find uh, the author. Let me go find this. I'm going to close out some of these windows here. Let me close all those out. Close, close, close. And, and now we're into Muzzy, into the Muzzy Lane world. Okay, so what I did is, and you could do the same thing, not telling you you have to or anything. It's a little bit, I wouldn't recommend it at this point, is you can get an account there. You can go over to Muzzy Lane Author and get an account, and you can play around with it. And you can set up instruction using 
their technique. Now, what I found about this is it doesn't really mimic what we just saw. It kind of mimics it. It's enough different, okay, that, um, let's see, here's an account. Let me go back out of this, all right? Not, not needed, not needed, okay? I'm just coming back up to the top level of author when we come in here, okay? So I was looking at a, they have a lot of demos in here that you can look at and build your own instruction from. Okay, here's one that they just put up this year. Why did Turkey down a Russian jet? Uh, I, I haven't really figured out the interface all the way. Uh, so it says edit, we can preview, we can publish, we can duplicate, we can rename an activity, move it, delete it. Now, I haven't worked through this interface much. I'm just taking a look at it this week for the first time. But if, let's see what happens. If you click edit this, let's see where it takes us. Okay. All right, so when we say edit, why did the trick thing? Spacious room. Okay, so what they're doing is they're setting up some rooms here. You can see the artwork that they use. I don't completely get it. I haven't gotten into it too deeply here, but here we have, it says scene. Scene settings up here at the top. Let's go down to the bottom. Okay, so they have scenes. I don't know what to do with these. <laughs> so uh, let's see. We're taking a look at, uh, we're, we're on the scene page here. You can click characters. So this is, these are the raw material, material settings, materials button. Showing you. Okay, so these are all the primitives that you can use to build your scenario of your training. Okay, so this is, this is real primitive. This is very, very, very primitive. And when you look up here, this word insights, okay, let's go back and investigate that. Let's go back here, okay. And there's four different kinds of questions that you can use, okay. Let's go to that. That's what's important here, okay. One more. Let's see if we can get out of here. New author update. They just updated it. So there's an active product. Okay. Bear with me here. Sorry, I'm taking a little bit of time. Let's go back out of this window. This is a different window. Okay, this is the, the page that I wanted to get to. So you come into Muzzy Lane Author, and here's the top level. When you get an account, you come in, and this is where you land. Okay, so it's actually asking me to log in. It's logged me out here. Okay, so to work with their author and come up with your own training, they have this knowledge base. So you can go through things that they give us. So this is gonna help us figure out the resources we need to build some training, okay? They have some guides here, okay? And these are interesting and important. These titles here, this Smart Chat, Smart Pick, Vote, Align, Insights, and kid citizen, which I don't have to worry about. That's something different. These other five things are variants in the types of questions or scenarios that you're going to present your trainee. Okay. So th these are like the raw, this is the basic structures that they give you coming into Muzzy Lane. So to, to work with Muzzy Lane says, okay, we're going to develop some tools under smart chat. Some of them are going to be smart chat. Some of them are going to be smart pick. Some of them are going to be vote. Some of them are going to be align. They're types of questions. It's like the difference between like saying this is true and false type of question. This is multiple choice question. This is essay question. Just to give you an idea, these are like the tools that they offer us. Okay. These are the raw materials that you can build an entire training package out of. That's what it is. Okay. So I want to go to quick intro to, to author. Muzzy Lane is a cloud-based authoring system to create dynamic role-playing. Role so it's all about role-playing. Remember, there's, there's different kinds of training, so this is role-playing, okay, for students. Author includes a set of templates to create different kinds of activities to meet different objectives, okay? So it's very important as this company, Muzzy Lane, and as a training company, you have to understand training and education from this pedagogical level, okay? And there's two words. Pedagogy and andragogy, okay? So pedagogy is teaching someone that doesn't have any work experience. That's like all the way up through higher ed if they haven't really gotten into industry yet. And there's this other term called andragogy, which this is a crossover. This product that we're looking at, right, is set up for higher ed and for actually other levels of uh, education below higher ed, right? So they're mainly been modeled for pedagogy. And there's just so much experience somebody that hasn't graduated and gotten a full-time job has, right? We all know that. Like, well, how much time in, in industry have do we have, right? And so <clears throat> really what I'm talking about is if we take this to industry, okay, it's much more applied and it might be uh, 
might be sorted not under pedagogy. So pedagogy is is what practices are you using to educate students? If you go get an education degree, pedagogy is the big word. I mean, you've got basically a degree in pedagogy if you got uh, training to become a teacher and up to high school level. Okay. All right. Uh, so that's pedagogy. It's all about what techniques are out there. What are what are good processes? How do people learn? Why are people different? Why do different people learn differently? That's the whole science around learning and everything. Okay, pedagogy. It's a whole other thing when you get to andragogy because you have these people with experience. They're not treated like kids. They're not, you know, deer-eyed little faces looking up at you from their desks. These are people who are like, give me the facts. I want to know how to make more money with this. I want skills immediately. Okay, so that's a huge difference between pedagogy and andragogy, right? Here we are with this, right? Okay, so I have to look at this through those eyes as a lot of this is designed for educators inside the pedagogy pyramid there, right? Okay, so what they say is you have role, these are the tools that we have available. We can role play a skill in a real world scenario, apply what we've learned, that's huge in teaching these days, is can you apply it, okay? Practice a skill, actually get better at it, solve problems using critical thinking, right? So, so this is an, a framework for education, right? You want to get all these things involved, especially in corporate training. You want to be able to prove to the financiers of all this, whoever make a decision, that it's had its effect, right? So I would think that you'd like to be able to train, uh, we'd, you'd assess somebody up front, assess them afterwards to be able to prove that they've come along and they can do things now. And that's not a bad way for the trainee to experience it either. They understand that uh, there's very clear outcomes of this, not just a general open, you know, learn about liberal arts approach to the world. No, th this is very skills based. It is knowledge based, but maybe low on, let's say, another target might be character development, leadership skills, things like that. OK, so it depends on what you're after. OK. So the author activities work across all devices. All right. So that's big these days, uh, everywhere from a desktop to a laptop to a tablet to a phone. OK, so what they have to do at Muzzy Lane is their tools have to work across all of these. I might have students that are trying to do this and I have had students try to do this on their phone. And for about a period of two weeks, I actually ran my classes over my phone. OK, so everything these days goes to a phone. And if, if not for the only reason that when my laptop died, that I had to use my phone. Okay. So that's why people might need to use their phone. I suddenly have more respect for that in the world. Um, otherwise you can't be very productive on a phone. The screen area and typing in there is just ludicrous. Okay. All right. So course design, micro learning opportunities, this, these author templates, notice the names again now. So this, you can have it a line type of template, a vote, a smart chat, an insights or a smart pick okay and that's what these the rest of this site as we go down here if you look it highlights the different experience that muzzy lane has set up okay so muzzy lane says hey listen we've got this environment called smart chat okay so you can create an entire lesson around smart chat and your next lesson might use an align format or an align process and align technique click here to play the activity so this is a, this is a capabilities page they're showing us what the capabilities are if you go muzzy lane author tools okay All right, so let's find that first example so the first thing is smart chat so if you run this thing okay I'm, i think this will help you calibrate okay so i'm i'm calibrating to this okay what is the range of what i can do with this also what's the look feel okay so it's definitely has a look feel to it. They've created a certain impression, icon set, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they're sort of stylistic type things. They're not using photographs, for instance, real sharp photographs of real people. They've, they've developed a symbology involved in their training that you can use, and that affects the product. I mean, the product is based on what kind of imagery they use. What, and it really comes down to font, so I'm not even gonna get into that, right? So we're gonna come in here, and so I'm actually playing this as the person that's the trainee, okay? So the first thing you do is you come in and you select an avatar, just for grins, I'm gonna click that, and it did change, so I can change the picture up here. So this is just a demo, remember, they've given us a demo to work with here, and so I can pick the picture that I care to as a trainee use as I go through here, okay? So we might see that this is a little bit limited in the demo, uh, but I don't care about it. And so the player name here is, uh, I'm going to put in here, uh, Peter. All right. Of course, my name is spelled correctly. Okay. So I can type in my name. Okay. So now what's the next step? I can't go anywhere else. So I did that. So I selected the avatar. So I'm going to select the avatar. 
So if you hear the background noise, uh, this is for a medical office environment. They actually have a product out there that I'll ask for a demo on, okay? So you can see from, from uh, production over to a service-oriented area, uh, medical uh, office here, doctor's office. Actually, that looks like my doctor's office, right? Okay, <clears throat> and so they've set up this demo as something you could build. You can build this for the medical office, right? So this is the idea that this is the finished product, at least, you know, a demo of it. Okay, what's this little guy up here? If I click that, <clears throat> it pauses for some reason. Oh, that's just the sound, okay? So if I turn that on, where did the sound go? If I turn that on, there's background noise, like you're in the environment, okay? So you can create, that's the immersion part. They offer visual, they offer sound, okay? That's the immersion part, okay? So let's go to continue. And these are the questions that the trainer would have set up. You walk into the entrance and sit down at the check-in desk, okay? So they're training you. They said, okay, your daily routine is you walk in, you sit down, turning on your computer right away, fine. Here's the conundrum. A woman enters the office, approaches the desk, at the same time, the phone rings. Okay, so they're going to give you a testing scenario here, how to handle multitasking or whatever, okay? So you have somebody at the desk and the phone rings. What are you going to do, All right? So we can continue. And, and which which of these two things do we do? Do we say, good morning, welcome to McCool and Fisk Medical Center. This is Peter speaking. May I help you? Uh, may I place you on a brief hold, okay? Or good morning, welcome to um, McCool and Fisk. May I put you on hold? So I'm going to say this is the better re response here because I'm more clear. It's always nice for people on the phone to know who they're speaking to. It has my name in there. That's almost the only difference here. And oh, by the way, that's probably... <laughs> uh, how can I go back? I accidentally clicked the wrong one. All right, whatever. So it didn't matter. They didn't score you on that one anyway. They just forced you to get into the engaged into the uh, interactive environment here and you can click any, either one of them it doesn't see if you notice it doesn't give you any output here whether you pick the right or wrong one okay so here's carol she's standing at the desk okay so you put somebody on hold good morning welcome to mccool may i put you on hold uh and okay carol's on the phone yes but please make it brief i need to go to work okay <laughs> pushy pushy um uh, and so they actually came back with the correct answer. I don't think this demo is working perfectly well, okay? So we said, okay. So now they actually corrected me, and I was wrong earlier, okay? So I was wrong earlier. I clicked the wrong one. I didn't click the one that had my name in there, right? So after putting the phone on hold, you look up at the patient standing in front of you, okay? So there's Julia in front of me, okay? Good morning, okay? Uh, and so now when I address Julia at the desk, hi, I'm available, but give me five minutes, please. So this is like a courtesy type question we have here, you know, good morning, how may I help you today? Hello, are you checking in? Listen, I was up all night, okay, give me a minute, okay, right. So probably, hello, are you checking in? Good morning, now I'll go with good morning, okay? Good morning, may I help you, all right, great. I selected that and it tells me, it gives me the feedback, correct, this was a friendly and professional greeting. Boom, okay, so Julia says, I'm Julia, I have an appointment with Dr. Johnson at 9.15, boom, okay. Okay, please give me a moment to pull up your information on the computer. <laughs> they have sound effects. Oh, she's not in the system. No records found. Great. Okay, so this is, this is the conundrum we have to solve, okay? Um, huh, nothing's coming up. Wouldn't say that. I'm not finding anything, Mrs. Becker. Uh, may I, am I correct that you are a new patient with us? And we are got to have that right. Okay, so it gives us the feedback. Correct. It's correct. Yes, that's my first time here. Nice to have you in. We will need you to fill out some forms. That's a highly likely answer here. Welcome to our wild and wacky practice. Certainly not. Good to meet you. Do you have, no, we're not going to ask them if they have medical insurance. I think that might even be a HIPAA question, right? So I'll click that and we'll see what we got it correct. We got it correct. So see, now what, this was a, um, we have to go back and understand what the title of this type of uh, question was, all right? So this is one form that you can use. And if this, what you do, what they do is they give you a template and you put your pictures in here and you type in all these responses. So you have, that's how you create your course. That's one form of what you can do, okay? And then they have those, these other um, <laughs> these other questions. And if you know I'm getting scored up here, the office acumen, I got my question wrong, and professionalism um, up to 15, I'm doing okay. So I think these colors, maybe they indicate how successful I am. This is only a really fast demo for people like you and me to look at, right?
Okay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm just going to close that out. Let's take a look at another one. So I closed that out. That was the smart chat. Okay, so that's when you know you have somebody that needs to uh, to be interactive with uh, customers or other people at work or something. Smart chat. You're forcing them to talk back and forth with people. Okay. Then there's this other thing called a line. Okay. So this was more skills based. So let's play that one for a while. This is um, an actually like a um, you know you're looking at these scripts and you're trying to get them straight. Okay. I thought this was kind of interesting. So let's uh, review. So I guess we go in here. And what it does is it's given us five scripts, card one of five. Okay, so we're in the office and we have to pay attention to what's going on here. Okay, so the first thing is there's these five cards. It has the uh, medication. It has the deliver. Okay, so we have this order up here. Okay, so like a pharmacy or something. We have an order for the medication. We have a delivery and we have a timing. So we have to match what the idea here is. We're going to take a look at these cards and try to memorize them or write them down or whatever. And then it's going to ask us later on, it says, how did you, how well did you remember that stuff? So penicillin was injection twice a day. Velocef was intravenous four a day. Ilosone was by mouth every six hours. Colas, colase by mouth at bedtime. Zolfran intravenous every four hours. We're back to penicillin. So we're, we're rotating around the five cards there. You can see this, right? So you have to take your own sweet time. They don't give you a, a clock to beat here, right? So you take your own sweet time figuring or remembering this. Penicillin injection twice. Velocef intravenous. So there's injection. That other one was injection. Intravenous. So there's a second type by mouth. And so there's three different kinds of delivery mechanisms, and then who knows how many different kinds of timing, okay? So once we try to memorize this stuff, we go, begin. Okay, so what it does is scrambles them up, and now we have to, for this uh, Zofran, right, we need to figure out uh, what the delivery mechanism was and what the timing was on it. I have no idea. I didn't memorize that stuff there. So uh, let's take a wild guess, and let's say... If you actually know what you're doing, you might understand some of this stuff up here. I don't know what it is. I'm going to take a really wild guess and say that's every four hours up there. Every four hours. And I IV, it says IV in there. Hey, hey, listen, I'm actually figuring this thing out. Boom, I got it. Okay, so I guess you can figure out from the drug what's going on there. Okay, I did not know that. Okay, click to continue. Let's try another one. Uh, there's a six hour in there. Every six, I'm going to go along with that. One gram PO. I have no idea what PO means. One gram is a little bit. That's a very small amount. Take a wild guess. It's only one gram. Let's shoot it into the muscle. Okay. So the green means I'm correct. And the pink, obviously, or peach, whatever you want to call it, is injection to muscle. Shoot. Let's go one gram by mouth. Boom. Lucky me. Okay. I got that right. Okay. So. I like that kind of question. This is pedagogy or andragogy. This this is different techniques to use between this and the last one. You want to come up with a range of techniques. And if you're really into this stuff and you've got a PhD in education, you'd actually be able to know what kind of people these work best with and that kind of thing. Okay, that's when you go get your PhD. So you could design these things. If you look at Muzzy Lane, they have PhDs. I think they have four or five on staff. Each of them covers a whole different range of what they do. Okay. Uh, and so I'm stuck in here, but we got the idea. This is the match, okay? So this is some kind of match uh, tool that we have, all right? So let me clear out of there, okay? Align, okay? So they called it align. We had to align those. I like that, okay? So so they have to be students of education. These things have to go under scrutiny in the education world as valid pedagogies or val valid methods and technologies. You have to know that stuff. That's what Muzzy Lane knows. Uh, they have a PhD in education on board, for instance, and, and they can speak to this, okay? So they get advisement from super smart people about education. Then they have smart pick. Let's take a quick look at that. Okay, so this is imaging. So we're, we're still in the medical world. Obviously, they're working with some medical uh, companies to develop a product. Usually, you can tell, you know, they have an awareness. Uh, their demos are, cir you know, circulate around some of the first engagements they're getting as a product here. So... Medical assistant, okay, so we're, we're a physician's assistant, PA maybe, medical assistant, diagnostic imaging, medical assistant, diagnostic imaging. Okay, so let's begin here, all right, tools to see inside, okay, so it's training. The first thing we're doing is we're training the person, boom, boom, 
Today we know the dangers of radiation. Okay, so there's a technician with a lead jacket on, or maybe it's a patient, I don't know. A medical assistant must understand. They're missing a picture here, I think. They're training us, okay? You arrive at work to discover two mislabeled files. This is our conundrum, right? This is what we're going to train on. Both videos are of a patient's hearts, but they are different imaging techniques, okay? So we go there, and, and we see these two things. Which video of this is an ultrasound? Uh, I think that's an ultrasound. Okay, boom. All right, so the other image was taken on an MRI machine. So they not only give you the right answer, they give you the wrong answer. They explain the wrong answer. That's pretty cool. That's pedagogy. You know, it's like, you know, that, that fits a category of, that's the kind of question that you can offer. What mechanisms allow these different types of diagnostic images to work? Okay. What kind of images, high frequency sound waves? Okay, so which one of these uses high frequency sound waves, obviously? Ultrasound? Bang. I could be a doctor, right? All right. What kind of imaging uses non-ionizing radiation, radio frequency, and magnetic? Uh, I would have to go with MRA because they actually use, they create magnetic resonance imaging, MRI. Everybody should be able to get that. Okay, which imaging is electromagnetic radiation interacting with photographic film to create an image? Uh, electromagnetic radiation is X-ray radiography, right? Boom, I think I'm right. And then you have gamma. This is uh, nuclear medicine where you have isotopes shooting off ionizing energy. Boom, boom, okay. Click that. Hey, what do you know? I should have been a doctor. Okay. Your phone rings, you pick up. I haven't been this deep into this thing, but uh, the patient on the other end. Okay. So again, it's another uh, thing about pharmacy and imagery and imaging and all that around medical. And so if we go back to this page that they give us as somebody interested here, Muzzy Lane author. Okay. Um, so this is trying to onboard us as customers of author. Okay. And what, so just to go over what we did, we saw, we did a smart chat in the office. We did an align cool thing with the scripts here. And then we saw smart pick. Okay. So as trainers, you know, we, we could use all these different kinds of tools to train in hospitality. Boom. Okay. That's pretty much all I wanted to show you. Uh, let's see how far this has taken us. Whew, I'm already out of half an hour. That happens all the time, but I want to be online, you know, I, I like synchronized with you, calibrated up. So when we go talk to somebody, in fact, we can, you know, get some ideas on the table here. Uh, and, and, may, and you're in a good position, I think, to maybe uh, solicit, you know, a discussion with people about what's missing. What would be really great right now is to understand what's missing in hospitality, do, you know, to triage it. You know, do they need common training? Do they need some kind of advanced training or do they need really super cool training? You know, and then I don't want to over deliver. I don't want to take any time if we don't need to. I'd like to deliver to it. And uh, I, you're so close with some of these people. I think as a duo, you and I, uh, we could put something on here and develop something out of it. You know, and and after that, there's other di there's different ways to, to deliver. Okay, so there's actually strategic ways to deliver the um, training too, or get it produced as it is. You know, we roll our Rolodex a little bit. I have some technical people if we need them. I don't want to get buried in actually developing this kind of thing. Uh, we, I just met somebody or I know of somebody here locally from the Cornell Hospitality. I think I sent that name to you. I saw them on LinkedIn. They grad, uh, they yeah graduated from Cornell Hospitality and whatnot, and they were one of the trainers in the uh, Council of Industry program. Okay. So my priority right now is responding to the Council of Industry. I need to get a website, some cut sheet material to, over to them. Uh, but I don't want to miss the bigger opportunity here. I want to keep working with you on this. So uh, sorry that this took 33 minutes. Uh, if you know YouTube at all, you can actually just speed it up. You can click on settings and then uh, run it faster. Uh, obviously, the benefit is you can stop this and look at the screens and stop listening to me. You can turn the volume all the way down. But anyway, uh, here you go. Enjoy. I'm going to post this and send you a link. Okay. Bye for now.